Hi, I'm back again for another devlog and this week I started off doing something useless. Yeah, I added some models to make my game look better, if it's even possible, so I don't want to waste too much of your time. But before jumping into something slightly more interesting, let's see what I'm talking about. So we got this bush, this other bush, this carambola tree, which is supposed to feed you or give you fruits that will feed you. I guess this is how fruits work. And this beech tree, well, this beech tree is one of my favorite. Uh, well, it's not difficult when you only have three trees, but yeah, I, I like it. Let's combine them and see how they look all together. So wind is somewhat important in my game since air balloons, airship, wind turbines, etc. are strongly affected by wind. So I came up with a pretty decent wind system where if this is my map with some islands, what I'm gonna have is a sort of 3D grid and each cell is gonna have a wind zone. A wind zone is basically a direction for the wind and an intensity. Well, since my map is dynamically generated and potentially infinite, I decided to make the grid expandable. So instead of using a 3D array, I came up with a 3D list uh, to store all data. To see it in Unity, I spawned a bunch of desert rocks and changed the color depending on the position in the matrix so you can see that the matrix is clearly visible and as I told before, every color is a wind zone. Well, now I can change desert rocks with wind models that I already have and we should be done. Keep in mind that the more wind, the more models, but for performance reasons, I cannot spawn wind models in every cell and that's because if so far, it's not even gonna be visible or barely visible. So what's the point of spawning it? The wind models work this way. They're going to be instantiated within the cube bounds and go in the current direction while the intensity is gonna tell me how many to spawn. As you can see, once the module goes out of bounds, it's destroyed, and that's just because it's getting into another cube. With all that stuff set up, I should be able to go in the direction of the wind. So, uh, are you ready? Uh, should I press this button? Let's try it. I don't know if you noticed it, so let's see it again. Basically, I kept going on the opposite direction of the wind, so to fix it, I just had to change the sign of the force applied. So that wasn't that big of a bug. The balloon is now fixed and I finally can move on the next. Forget what I just said. While testing the wind system though, I noticed that when I get closer to an edge, I can see where the wind effect ends and again I put rocks to see it better and to solve this I decided to spawn wind also in the cube next to the current one. So I need to figure out in which octate I am and then calculate all the cubes position. So if for example I am in the blue cube, I will have to spawn wind in all the blue cubes uh, and same thing of course for yellow and all the colors. Well, I'm not mad. <laughs> Uh, that does make sense, it's just kind of messed up to say. The last thing now is to figure out how to know in which octant the player is. And to do that is very simple. What I did is to take the player position and access to its transform coordinates and check whether they are after or before the half of the current cube. By checking one by one, I can delete every time half of the cube, having as a result the search Octant. And here's the code without getting too deep into it. Uh, you can see the wind zone class with the direction, the intensity, the method that I can call from any other object uh, that has a transform component. And to populate the dictionary, I add a key that is a string obtained by the indexes of the current cube matrix. And since I know they're every time different, I'm not going to have errors trying to add an already existing key. Of course, I use the singleton pattern. Uh, for this because it's a sort of manager and it might be a problem if more instances are created. I think it's everything for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.